Welcome to the DeFi Standard, and this is Mickey B. Fresh. And I'm Patty XRP. So we have an interesting video for you installed for today. We have the APY Cloud from Flare Finance, and we have a deep dive into it with Patty XRP, who wrote a phenomenal blog on the APY Cloud. So I want to start off, um, Patty, just give a little... Uh, background about the APY cloud and you know certain things that we learned about it yeah for sure and I just want to preface this with the the fact that like this is new documentation you know we're trying to understand it mm -hmm. as we're reading through it we've gone through it quite a few times now and talked to different people so this is our best understanding right now Flare Finance team is going to come out with some more detailed documentation in the future so if we need to make updates to this um, we will and we'll keep you all posted. And I'm sure we're gonna find out a lot more because I feel like even though it was full of a lot of information, we're still at a very base level. Um, but in short, the way that they describe it is the first user govern, governed dynamic yield aggregator. So you can kind of think about it as like a programmatic like robo advisor um, for the entire Flare Finance ecosystem, which is a really cool concept. All right, so this is on our DeFiStandard.com website, which is the DeFiStandard.com. So this is a source of information that's free for everyone. We have all my YouTube videos up here, uh, a lot of voice notes I've done in the past, and all the great blogs that Patty has wrote recently in the past and will in the future. So I really encourage everyone to check out the DeFiStandard.com. So now, what is it, Patty, that's so revolutionary about this design as a basically dynamic yield aggreg aggregator? And what does that mean for Flare Finance DeFi ecosystem? What's special about it? Yeah, so basically the goal of the APY cloud, so this is going to be basically a program that's running and monitoring the status of the network. And its main mandates are basically to um, set long-term yield that you can know within a range that's set by governance for anybody that wants to participate in governance staking. So at launch, that's going to be between 5% and 35% uh, APY. So that's over the course of the entire year, what you can earn with your F assets, YFIN, and YFLARE by staking in basically the governance staking pool. And so it's guaranteed yield and they have certain triggers that if they're hit and it's falling outside that threshold, that there'll be extra disbursements to cover the minimum yield in those cases. And also with this, since people are going to be locking up tokens, that means that it's going to help support token prices and the long term value of those as well. So what they're really trying to go for is getting an equilibrium between the total value locked, which is a a big term TVL and DeFi, and then how much participation and money is going through all their products like the Flare Dex, uh, Flare Loans, Flare Wrap, Flare Mutual, all their other products that are available um, throughout the DeFi ecosystem. Okay, so just to clarify for our listeners here, this is something in addition to using these other DeFi products like you said there, right? So this is something you could do after you earn YFIN from the Flare Farm? Yes, absolutely. So you'll be able to, like, let's say, instead of participating in any of the products that are available, like providing liquidity or providing collateral for loans and everything, you could take your YFLARE, YFIN, and you can just stake it in the Flare Finance ecosystem. And it's a way to basically distribute some of the fees that are being earned from all these different products throughout their ecosystem and then deliver them through this governance staking pool. So the APY cloud is basically what manages how this like long-term sustained yield is gonna be laid out to the people that are doing that. And it's basically just trying to guarantee that over a long period of time, you're gonna get this minimum APY, which like I was saying is 5% at launch. And the way that that is determined basically so the total, it's basically going to take the, um, 
what is it, the fees that are coming from all the other products and then divide that by the total value locked in that governance staking pool. And that tells you if the minimum threshold's being met. Mm. So that's that's how it's getting delivered. They also have these reserves of Y Flare set up, you know, to protect against like rougher times when maybe the platform's not being used as much, like bearish conditions in the market. Um, so like, I like to think of it as just like programmatic monetary policy. And instead of like being reactive, like a lot of the central banks are across the world, they're trying to set, you know, be proactive with it and have things set up in place. If the ecosystem's moving in a way that may not be beneficial for the users, they have some safeguards in place to make sure that everyone's still, you know, earning a fair amount. So there's no like value drain um, with all the Flare Finance tokens and products. Excellent. That's a great explanation on that. And one thing I noticed after reading this is why Finn has a very low token supply of only 11,000. And 4,000 of that 11,000 is going to be mined from the Flare farm in the first year. So we always knew that why Finn was going to probably have a very high value after you earn it. But now, with this governance staking, since it's the main governance token, this will actually support its value. So after earning it in the Flare Farm or in other protocols like the Flare Loans, you now have something to do with it. You could put it in the Flare X liquidity pools, but to really participate in the governance, you put it right in the Flare staking, and you're earning yield on that Y fin, and it's also supporting that value because it's keeping it locked up. So this is this gives me like a higher expectation of the potential long-term value of YFIN and also YFLARE. So now here's another question, Patty. 40 million YFLARE are going to be airdropped to Spark holders one month after the Flare network goes live. But now there's an additional 40 million YFLARE that still hasn't been distributed. Now, how is the APY cloud going to relate to that 40 million Y flare that has yet to be distributed. Yes. So, and as a reminder, the total supply of Y flare is going to be 110 million. So with that, since 40 million is being distributed to spark holders, the, and then 30 million distributed to the foundation or like the team basically. And the other 40 million that's left over is going to be sitting in this Y flare reserve pool. And this can kind of get into one of the triggers that happens if this 5% minimum APY threshold, if it falls below it for the governance staking pool, then some of that Y flare from the reserve pool is going to be distributed out to the governance staking pool to meet that 5% minimum APY. Um, and this is set up in a way so that it would be able to distribute over three years in case we have just like a terrible bear market or like, let's say the global economy is suffering a recession. So like naturally some of the DeFi ecosystems are as well, since there's less money to go around, this will be able to sustain over long periods of time so that you're still able to earn yield on your assets that are involved in the system, which I think is a huge part. And this is the stress distributions. So this is the first basically backstop for if the minimum APY is not being hit and that's what that y, y, y flare pool is being used for. The nice thing about it is like, let's say everything's you know fine and dandy for a few years, and you know there's not as need to keep as much in there. Like the Y flare price price has increased. Um, governance, which is determined by Y flare holders and Y fin holders, could vote to use some of those reserves in some other way, you know, to be determined in the future. So I think that's another cool aspect of it. And then to get into this next part on bond distributions. So the way I see this is that the stress distributions didn't work out and this minimum APY is still below the threshold. And at that point, the system is going to issue something called bonded Y flare, which is B flare. And it's going to equal a one to one price to Y flare. So you'll be able to maintain your price appreciation if you opt into this. But what it does do is lock up your Y flare and basically is trying to get as many people as possible to swap their Y flare for B flare and create a supply shock 
that would basically like jolt the system back to life. So if you think about like a defibrillator or something like that, that's going to send a shock through your system to bring it back to life. That's basically kind of like a worst case scenario option. You know, you can maybe liken it to um, how the Fed would push out stimulus or like through fiscal policy stimulus to jolt the economy alive and get spending going. They're kind of taking a different approach where they're trying to boost the token values and get people to start using the platform again and getting a nice balance between this governance staking pool and the fees being earned from all the other products. Okay, excellent description. Now, when we talk, one other thing I just wanted to add to that, Patty, is when the fees being collected, that's the utilization of these protocols. So the more utilization and volume going through these DeFi protocols like Flarex, Flare Loans, Flare Farm, that increases the fees, which is going to reward those in the governance staking. If there's not enough, they do the stress distributions. And now bond distributions is really to backstop, right, Patty, the, the value of these tokens. Yes, All absolutely. Right. So now let's go into one of the most exciting components of this, the excess distributions which is during the really good times, right, Patty? Yeah, absolutely. So with the excess distributions, what this means is that the um, the top end of the APY threshold is being hit. So you can imagine how well things are going if people aren't participating in governance staking enough to where they have, you know, it's a 35% APY per year or higher which I mean, is just unheard of in traditional finance. I know there's other DeFi platforms that have high APY, but the nice thing about this is, yeah, so with the excess distributions, um, the nice thing about it is if we're hitting that, that means the whole system is operating really well. There's a ton of participation, liquidity being provided, loans are being put out through all the products that they have available. And it also means that that's so lucrative on that side that there's not so many people in the governance staking pool that the APY there is like 35%, which is crazy high for something that's essentially risk-free. And I mean, the only risk that's coming with the governance staking pool for the most part, other than like the yield dropping below the bottom threshold, is that you have to trust like the basically the code behind it, which, you know, like all these things is similar for every project. So it's not like any added risk you're taking on. So when this excess distributions occur, basically they're going to give like a boosted distribution to all the people that are using the products on Flare Finance and providing liquidity, collateral for loans and all that stuff. And it'll be a 10% of the excess Y Flare that's out there that basically would have been distributed if the APY threshold was higher. And it's going to deliver it to everybody throughout the ecosystem as like a booster. And this goes for a three month period. And if the APY for the governance staking pool doesn't come back down below that threshold, then that means it will continue for another three month period. So like if things are just continually going very well, this will keep going on and everybody's gonna be making uh, you know, really high APY for you know long periods of time if it's going really well. Um, so that's like one of the really exciting parts. And you know, we'll have to see how this evolves. I don't know of many thing, you know, many projects out there that have this built in, but I do think like, I guess to wrap it up here with like what I call the APY cloud reality is that like, there's not a lot of this going on and this is very forward thinking in the space. And, you know, this, these kind of like protocols are gonna evolve over time, but this is very forward thinking. And this got me like even, I was excited about having DeFi on Flare Network with Flare Finance, but now I'm like much more hyped about it to see how this will work out just from like, you know, like I'm interested and curious to see what happens with this because it's not it's not something that's common in today's world. So, yeah, go ahead. Mickey. I completely agree. And I think the APY cloud, like you right here, is a novel approach to program pro programmatic and proactive monetary policy within a DeFi ecosystem. And since DeFi is so nascent of a market, like we're really just scratching the surface of what is possible. So this is kind of, I feel like the next evolution of how to manage a DeFi ecosystem with multiple protocols, multiple market participants and stakeholders built specifically 
for a network like Flare Finance, which has low gas fees, has the decentralized Oracle in it, basically to manage so that APY Cloud could probably interact with the FTSO to see where the price valuations of the YFIN is and YFLARE is, how much utilization on this network. And I could see machine learning going into this in the future too. And like Patty writes here, its design is meant to buffer the ecosystem in the worst times while boosting it in the most bullish of conditions. And then kind of adding the bonding as a backstop pretty much. I think it's just a really fascinating idea because it takes components from you know, the traditional markets mixed with the new DeFi, and it's basically programmatic monetary policy on in real time. And governance, which will be us, those who hold YFlare and YFin, will manage this system, and there's potential to burn some of the supply in certain conditions, we were, we were told, but more information will come out on this. And, you know, this is pretty much the, I guess, the best information that we have at the moment to go through this right patty was there anything you wanted to add um that we should yeah. expect in the future maybe coming so out? i don't know uh, they have like a technical and a financial paper that's going to release before launch and then i think what's going to happen is the white paper is going to come out as they're launching based on this blog which is linked at the top of the page but the last thing i wanted to add about this is i kind of put quotes around this term sweet zone so when we were kind of messaging with some of the um, team in the Flare Finance Discord, and basically like you can think of this sweet zone as somewhere in between the, the minimum and the maximum APY threshold. And that's kind of where it's normally gonna live. So I think these distribution periods are probably gonna be outlier events that happen. And more realistically, like market forces are gonna take over and they're gonna see, okay, like maybe people aren't earning as much yield from, you know, participating in the products. And so they'll move over to the governance staking pool and kind of level it out and balance it similar to how like supply and demand work. So I think it's gonna be really interesting. And ideally this governance staking uh, APY is gonna be somewhere in the middle um, that's what I see happening, but you know, if things are going really well, it'll boost the system. And if things are going poorly, at least, you know, there's a backstop there. So in case of like some crazy event, you know, you won't get, you know, maybe screwed as poorly, you know, as bad as you would have it without it. So that's, that's what I'm really excited about with this. And I'm, I'm excited to learn more as well. Yes, me too. And remember, we have to keep in mind that on the Flare Network and Flare Finance, we're going to have one thing that's different than Ethereum is we're going to have these F assets brought over there like XRP, like Litecoin, like XLM, like Doge, and like Bitcoin too, and Cardano possibly. They have tens of billions, or if not hundreds of billions, and with Bitcoin trillions of dollars, potentially that can be unlocked. So besides like Ethereum, where you just have basically wrapped Bitcoin, which is a centralized kind of process with high gas fees, you're now going to have the ability to bring all these other assets that don't have access to DeFi onto Flare. And I think that's going to really help bootstrap, you know, the DeFi on Flare Finance, especially because you're going to have all this value coming there ready to be used. And you're going to still gain the capital appreciation and using it in some of the Flare Finance products. And remember, the F assets are going to come with daily yield earned in Spark. Now, if you put your F assets in a single-sided Flare Farm pool, you're going to still be able to earn YFIN plus simultaneously earn the daily Spark for just bringing your F asset over there. So this is what Flare Finance is building is in addition to that and to support the basically monetary policy of the Flare Finance ecosystem and just to add on one thing here, Patty, they're also adding a launch pad for other projects to then be built on top of Flare Finance to launch their tokens. Yeah, it's it's very exciting how all this is kind of melding together and it just lends into the whole compounding yield. And if you're willing to take a chance early on, um, you could be handsomely rewarded, but we'll have to see how that plays out for sure. Absolutely. So on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. This was um, really, I gotta agree with Patty. Like I was very 
pleasantly surprised when they released the APY cloud. And that is just the first day of their blogs. We're probably not going to get a white paper until after the network launches. But we will get, like Patty said, the financial paper and a technical paper, which will give us a little more details and into an insight into really how powerful this system could be being built, built from the ground up. We have six different DeFi protocols being built on Flare Finance from the beginning with this now programmable monetary system. So I think we should all be very excited. This is not hype. I mean, these are facts. This is what is being built. And with the pace of DeFi moving now, I think it's only going to accelerate further once we bring tokenization in and other types of traditional market value. All right. On that note, I'm Mickey B. Fresh. I'm Patty XRP. And we're out.